so I'm going to move on then with uh, just this particular component. Um, I got rid of the warped surface one over here, so you guys can do that as well. Um, you'll notice that the model is pre-built with a couple of curves. Um, like I have a curve at the edge here, and I have a curve at the edge here. Um, I also built curves um, around the profile of the face, and th those kind of came in from what we had before. Um, but we, we're probably not going to use those. So to start us off, if you recall um, from what you saw before, there is a surface in the front. However, if you look at the top view, that surface is actually a flat plane on the, uh, the curved edge. So wherever the flat plane corners meet, it engages the edge of the building itself. So how are we going to do that? knowing the tools that you know by now in this course. Any ideas? Well, we already have the line there. We already drew it. You mean the vertical line? That's right. No, not the vertical line. No, you don't draw the vertical line. It's kind of a two-step process, guys. So you already know how to subdivide a surface. But what we're going to do is subdivide the surface and then grab both sides of each curved subdivision and then we're going to loft them so that it's flat. Now you won't always be able to do this. In fact, um, it's best suited for uh, straight vertical applications. In fact, the warped surface one gets a little bit funky because it's not, uh, it's not exactly, let me show you real quick. They're not exactly going to be square, essentially. So notice how this glass piece actually kind of warps a little bit. So in truth, that's not going to work in all cases, but we're pretty close with this one. So let's move on um, to this. Basically, our first step is going to be breaking it down. So um, what I'm going to do here is uh, select the top and the bottom curves, and I'm going to loft them, obviously, in Grasshopper. So I'm going to um, open up Grasshopper. And the first thing I'm going to do is drop in a curve param which I can input both of my curves into the same one by setting multiple curves. So I'll select the top curve on the edge face there and the bottom curve on the edge face here and hit enter. And I have two ways of lo essentially lofting a surface. There's um, under the surface tab, under the freeform panel, you have loft and you have ruled surface. And they operate a little bit differently, but they essentially function the same. Loft is going to ask for a list of section curves. And ruled surface is going to ask for two separate curves, essentially two separate lists of one or multiple curves. What we have just done is created a singular list of multiple curves, and so we'll use loft. And when we plug that in, you'll see that it generates our surface here. <clears throat> okay, so um, with that, we essentially, all we have to do now is just set up our, our subdivisions, right? So you guys should by now remember how to subdivide a surface. What tools do we need? Come on, guys. Divide and subsurface, yes. You don't need offset, not yet. Actually, do we? Do I use offset? I do, yeah. Um, but, but right now, we, we just want the um, divide domain squared and subdivide surface. We've done this before, so go to math, domain, divide domain squared.
And then we're also going to use under surface and utility ISO trim, which comes out to be subdivide surface. Okay, and we can start off by doing the default connections. The loft as a surface is going to plug into the I domain base for the subdivision. It's also going to plug into the surface input for subdivide surface. And then our domain from divide domain squared, this S is going to plug into the domain subset input of isotrim like that. And those are our default values for subdivisions, which are 10 and 10. But like the one that I showed you before, this one we're actually going to just want vertical subdivisions right now. Those vertical subdivisions uh, are going to be overridden on the divide. So that would be, I'm going to do sliders from 0 to 10. And plug them in here. Um, start off with one and then you can bump up and just make sure that you're dividing the correct direction. Turn these off to see it a little better. So I'm right now dividing horizontally in the U direction. Yours might be flipped depending on how you created the surface but uh, my U direction is horizontal so I'm going to leave that at one and then my V direction is the vertical and that's going to be, um, what did I do, four. But like anything else, you could have a degree of variability. It doesn't have to be four. Any questions so far? Okay. So um, what we're essentially going to do with this model is to uh, deconstruct it, find the edges, and then loft them together into flat panels. Okay, um, when you're doing a warped surface, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you need to be very controlled about how you generate the form, but right now we're still vertical, so we can just do a loft. Um, and so we're going to do that this way. First step is to deconstruct the surface itself. That gets you, obviously, your faces, your edges, and your vertices in groups of four. You guys remember that, right? All right. So um, what we're going to work with is the edges. Okay. You're familiar now with the edges, and I'm just putting this in here um, just so I can select it so you can see, right? You're familiar with the edges as sort of a framework, right? If I'm going to loft them, how many curves do I need? Two, right? I need two curves. So which two curves do I need? Is it four and two ends? Which ends? You don't know which ends? Of, of each surface. Yeah, OK. So right to left would give us the vertical and most importantly, straight edges, OK? Because they are straight vertical. Um, so anyway. I can get rid of this now. I just, I didn't need that. Turn off your old stuff. And uh, so the edges are what we're going to work with. And how do we isolate those particular edges? How do you isolate an item from here? Anybody? All right. I'm going to start giving you guys little mini quizzies. All right. So the edges, the edges um, come out in packs of four, a list of four items. So that was a line like curve, an arc like curve, a line like curve, and an arc like curve. Okay. That's very important to understand that because we have to isolate the line-like curves, right? Those are the ones that are on your east and your west edge, not your north and your south of the panel. So um, we have to do a list item to isolate an item from a list. 
under set and list, list item is going to obviously read the list of lines or edges or curves or whatever it is um, in packs of four. And then we're going to tell it which index item of each of those sets we're going to pull out. And we can do that with a uh, panel. And the panel, when you double click it, is going to say the index values that you needed, which were 0 and Oh man, you guys really got beat up this weekend. Come on guys, I just told you, zero and two. So the first one we want is zero. Notice how zero doesn't have a line on the right hand side. That's because I took, the zero only gives me the left hand, the left side edge of every panel. So I'm gonna need to do this twice. Copy and paste that down, and I'll change this one to be the other value, which was 2, and then select that, and you see that now it doesn't select the one on the left side, which means it's selecting all of the edges that are on the right side of each of these panels. <clears throat> so now with this, um, I just gave you two different ways of lofting a surface together from two curves. And which one are we going to use in this case? Which one's easier? Hmm? Under surface and freeform, we have loft and we have ruled surface. What's the difference between the two? Loft is going to loft a list of two curves, a singular list of two curves. Ruled surface is going to take two separate lists of curves and loft them together. So what we just created is two separate lists of curves that we want to loft together. So we want ruled surface. Oops. Yep, surface, freeform. And all you have to do is just plug in the first one into A, the second one into B, and you're going to notice a mistake. Okay, The mistake is that the order of points around the edge of the panel defines the direction of the line. So when we loft them together, it gets flipped because the order of points, I'll show you right now actually, um, under display, we're going to do a point list display. We'll put in the vertices and we'll go, uh, here we go, 0 to 5. Uh, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. Okay, so following along with these green ones here, because they're the only ones that gave me some real contrast, um, 0 and 1 and then 2 and then 3. So the line direction is going down on this side, and the line direction is going up on that side. Does that make sense? So that's why we have this X-wing looking, uh, you know, fighter jet thing going on. Uh, so anyway, what we got to do is flip one of the lines, which is actually remarkably easy. Um, oops, sorry. It's um, under curve and utility, I think. Yeah, flip curve, there it is. Uh, so flip curve is basically just going to change the direction of your curve. So uh, we just need to insert that into one of these. It, I don't think it really matters which one, but if you choose one versus the other, then you're going to have your normal facing one way versus the other way when it generates the surface. So it's not mission critical, but I'm going to pick uh, this one. And I'm going to plug the index items of my second curve into the curve input of flip. And you don't really have to worry about guide curve, um, but we're just going to get our flipped curve on the other side. You also don't have to worry so much about the flip action, just the curve to curve. And then we'll plug that into ruled surface. Oops. 
Okay, so uh, what we get when you look in the top view is a subdivided panel that is flat. What questions do you have? No questions. Okay, good. Cool. So um, I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to move on to the next step here in just a second. Um, but I, I, I want to sort of preface that by saying the next step is going to be our uh, fin that we're going to create. And so we're going to have to basically offset a fin because it can't start from exactly the same origin. And to do that, we're going to use similar subdivision properties just offsetting it with the same values, okay, or with variable values. Okay, uh, I'll stop here.